Here is a cool interesting effect using RGB channels. We're going to shift the channels in an interesting way to get this chromatic shift effect. Before we start, here is the plan. First step will be separating the image in RGB layers and then combine them to get our original image back. Once we have our RGB layers, we will then distort each of them differently using a distort filter, which will hopefully result in an interesting chromatic shift. Optionally, we can add additional effects with masks on top to finish it. So let's start by separating the image in a red, green and a blue channel. There are many ways of doing this and I'll put a link in the description if you're interested in the details of this process. In this video, I'll utilize the procedural texture filter for the RGB separation. I'll need three duplicates of the image and apply a procedural function filter on each of them. In each of these layers, I will make sure that only one channel gets filtered. Once we have the separate RG and B color layers, we can use the Add Blend Mode on the top two layers to mix the colors back together. As mentioned, I'll make sure that there is a link to a video in the description explaining this process in more detail. Excellent! Now that we have the separate color layers, the fun can actually begin. For the red channel, I'll start by making it a tiny bit bigger in the size. I can quickly do this by making sure the Move tool is selected and then press the Enter key. This will open up the Move Transform dialog. I'll use 101 as the size percentage and press the OK button. For the green channel, I'll add the Lie Spherical filter. Let's turn off all the other layers so we can see more clearly how we are distorting the green layer. I'll max out the radius and use an intensity value around 30%. Let's turn on the bottom red layer to see the effect. That looks pretty cool already. I'll slightly decrease the intensity value and adjust the radius slightly to get a better blend. Time for the blue layer. After turning off all the other layers, I'll add the live twirl filter to it. As we want to touch all of the image, I'll make sure the radius is quite high. But this also means we need a lower value for the angle. Let's set it to 3 degrees for a gentle effect. To achieve a bit more distortion, I'll also add the ripple distortion filter. Again, we want a gentle distortion. So for the time being, let's go with an intensity of 6. The ripple filter got added at the top of the layer stack. So let's drag and drop it on the blue layer to make sure the ripple will only be applied to the blue layer. As a final distortion for the blue layer, I'll add a pinch punch distortion filter. Again, a large radius and a gentle punch will be enough. Let's turn on the other two layers to see the final result. Pretty cool. From now on, it's just fine-tuning to your liking. For example, I feel like the shift in the red is not enough. To achieve a bit more shift in the red, I'll add a spherical filter to it and adjust it so that we get a bit more red shift. For this image, I think it would be more dramatic when we remove the effect from the face of our subject. A quick way is by copying the original image and pasting it on top of the layer stack. We can now add an inverted mask by holding the Alt option while pressing the mask button. With a white soft big brush, I can paint in the original face area. This makes the falling in the black money hole definitely more dramatic. To add more drama, I'll add an embossed sharpen effect. For this, I'll make a copy of the original again and paste it at the top of all the layers. I can then apply a high pass filter on this copy. Let's increase the radius of the high pass until we clearly see what is happening. We also need a fill layer. But this should be a neutral gray and below the high pass layer we just created. We can now open up the blend options of the high pass layer and change the source layer range so that the gray areas from the high pass become transparent. Why you ask? Well, it is because I want to add an emboss effect. The emboss effect works on the borders of a layer and by removing the grays we have a border around the subjects. So in the quick effects panel I'll enable the bevel and emboss effect and increase the radius. 
Looks pretty interesting. Let's group the embossed high pass and the grey fill. We can now blend the group in overlay blend mode to give the composition an interesting effect. Here is the before and here is the after. As we have used all live filters, we can easily modify and customize it to our needs. Let's try it on another image. To save some time, I recorded these steps as a macro. I can double click my macro and it gets applied immediately. Pretty awesome. By playing with the distortions and even by using different blend modes on the distortion filters, you can get pretty amazing results. Here is another image. Let me apply the macro quickly to it. That looks pretty interesting and just play around with the effects to get interesting results. Hope you liked this video and found it inspiring. Thanks again for tuning in and don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before leaving. Until the next video.